Well, let's now go to Mike Jordan Lukomwa, who happens to be at the scene uh, to give us some information of art, what exactly transpired and how security is managing the situation right now. Yes, Chilabo Nyonyi Intono, thank you so much. It is a very sad morning uh, today in Kampala, Uganda, where we had explosions. And according to the preliminary reports, we have had a lot of injuries and uh, some suspected deaths. As you can see, can you put off you can see, can we remove the, the with the five signatures? Can the five signatures come here with the police? What are you Uh, the situation is tense and uh, it can't be stable better than this because we are being pushed away from uh, what is the scene already cordoned off by security operatives security agencies are already in charge of the situation here but it is sirens of ambulances sirens of security vans and pickups and all that uh, the situation is really tense i can see a lot of police officers here army officers military officers are trying to Uh, trying uh, to, to, to see how they can contain the situation. But as you can see in that direction, it is only ambulances, firefighting trucks, only such vehicles. Why? Uh, as you can see, that is the building. Opposite farmer's house, the building that has a number of ATMs. The building that has Diamond Trust Bank ATMs and uh, Absa Bank ATMs, opposite farmer's house. That's where uh, the, one of the explosions is reported to have occurred and a number of injuries and deaths have been reported in there. We are yet to confirm. But as you can see in that shot on your screen, it is only fire fighter trucks and ambulances around that building. And that tells what the situation has to be or could be inside there. The preliminary reports tell a number of injuries and deaths. And that is what we have gathered so far. according to the situation so the, it is a t just tension here ambulances are expected to be uh, evacuating those injured and the firefighter trucks are around the building uh, to put out flames and all that as you can see ambulances are being uh, uh, evacuating a number of people that have been injured within uh, the building and security is in charge of the situation uganda last had this kind of a scenario a number very many years ago in september 11th that was uh, during what, when people were watching the world cup finals in lugogo and uh, the ethiopian village in march india where had explosions and over 30 people died in that occurrence here is it where more than two have been reported in the city this early morning at around between 9 and 10 that explosions went off early this morning. So we'll be giving you reports. As you can see, that's another ambulance, St. John's ambulance. And probably it's here to evacuate one of those that have been injured. Security has cordoned off uh, the road between Parliament 
and uh, Parliament of Uganda and uh, Farmer's House, the, that road that goes, it connects to what used to be Nando's, then Uganda House. Um, security has cordoned off that road and we are not allowed to go beyond the gate of Parliament to close to uh, the building that had the explosion. So we, we can give you information from a distance something like 100 or 200 meters to the building that is said to have had um, the explosion. So, so far that is the situation here along the street. As you can see, it is only health workers and security personnel that are with the right to walk around and take uh, the chance to contain the situation. A live feed from these two incidents. A couple of casualties have been reported and these have so far been taken at a Kampala Capital City Clinic for treatment. But also we must inform you that in case you're making uh, your way into the city, there could be inconveniences in some of these areas, areas around CPS and also parts around Parliament, of course. And of course, we continue calling upon vigilancy. Vigilance at this time in case of any suspected activity or any suspicious character, please inform the security. And also in case you're stopped or some place have been cordoned up, please be able to comply. Uh, we'll be going to the scene anytime from now where our reporters are already deployed to give us more of what is happening. But I'm with Priscilla uh, Naroga. Priscilla, it all started as a peaceful uh, day. But of course, we've known in the last two to three weeks, first was the uh, British Commission warning us, uh, the UK government, that there could be attempted terror threats. Then we saw what happened at Koma Amboga. At, that is a Digitapo joint where a suspected tourist, uh, we saw lives, a life that was lost, people yes. were injured. Mm. Then also, not so far, we had the a The transport bus. sector. The transport mm. sector also being affected uh, by good enough in that incident, uh, the actual person, according to security reports, shows that one the of the terrorists, terrorists, terrorists was the also actually passed, away. passed away in this. We've been at this, of course, not forgetting the 2010, what happened at Ethiopian village and, of course, uh, here Chadondo at Chadondo Rugby, Rugby Club. Club. Mm. So we've been at tenterhooks in one way or the other, most at such a time. Here, we are yet to get the actual facts. But what we know, it has been a blast. And security have been trying to get to local West Gile and they said, Robert, we are still busy, but we suspect indeed that there has been two bomb blasts in the city. Well, it's definitely been an interesting morning. Mm -hmm. uh, the loom of darkness beholds mm -hmm. the city, the capital of Kampala. We had, we first had the first one, mm -hmm. but it wasn't as much pressure uh, in, for, in reference to the ground. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were having a meeting with my colleagues uh, somewhere within the building. And then the second one went off and that ascertained that this can only be a bomb. It can't be a tire that has burst somewhere around one of the roads that surround our premises here. And then that's when we confirmed that uh, there had been some bomb blasts nearby uh, where we are right here at mm. UBC. Because uh, IPS building is not very far. It's not very far. It's mm. a walking distance. So I met, uh, when I got to find out that that's one of the places that has been affected, I got to raise a call to one of my colleagues that works in one of those uh, places on that particular building. Mm. And they did ascertain that uh, the bomb had actually exploded uh, the ground floor. Mm. And uh, many of them are actually being rushed to various nearby hospitals. Uh, some information that we have gotten is that there's an AAR facility that is receiving some of these casualties for these bomb blasts. Some skins have got to scrape off, eyes are popping for some of uh, the people that are giving me reports here. So we await to see, of course, and get confirmation from the security organs in that regard. Well, Jordan uh, Rukoma there on ground of one of the incidents that has happened and of course reliable information from police that we've been able to get is that right now they cannot give an exact figure of how many people could have been injured but all they are assuring the public is please remain calm 
uh, security forces are doing all it takes to ensure that they restore order and also uh, look what just just said please abide by the current inconveniences because some roads have gotten diversions and also abide by what security is instructing you he said most of a time like this people tend priscilla not to abide if they tell you do not cross off this particular point because sometimes when terrorists carry out such activities uh they know that sometimes there would be presence of people rushing at yes. a certain point That's true. and they take advantage of that again so police is urging you that when you're told do not access do not go to this venue please do not at such a time do not take this road if this has been cordoned off so, so basically where we are seeing red tape right now especially in around parliamentary avenue that is a place that is definitely a no-go zone right now and the purpose as to why they're pushing people away from the area code is that it's still a live um place anything can happen anything right can now still because happen, it's still yes. a live explosion site and that is to protect people and also to make sure that every form of evidence is protected to be able to then carry out uh, further investigations into exactly what has gone down this morning when you talk about traffic obviously any traffic that is going through parliamentary avenue if you are accessing the likes of side uh, chintu road all those areas are going to not be accessible as of the rest for the day even some parts of ginger road i'm pretty sure on the other side where you do have dfcu bank and uh, the railway on the other side i think those are also going to be cut off for security purposes and we're going to be having diverse routes that we'll later share with you because I know that uh, given the instability and the insecurity within the heart of the city people are now reconsidering having to go back home uh, so that they can allow security agencies to be able to carry on their work throughout the day mm. and very importantly also to note is that uh, police is doing all it takes to ensure that first and foremost uh, the public must remain calm no need to panic at such a time and also okay. let them to carry out their work because usually what happens is uh, in fighting crime the sin of crime most of the times if it has been violated or it uh, or contaminated if i use that term that investigations become very hard and that is one of the changes uganda police has always been talking about mm -hmm. that even where we would get relevant evidence you find that these things have been contaminated okay people want to know people want to be at places they shouldn't be in terms of this yet this could render their lives also in danger but let's look at uh, the element of uh, such incidents of terrorism you know terrorism is a global threat mm 